cut up into pieces as you can see get your butcher to cut it because there's no way you've got anything at home to cut those bones it's been washed with the juice of a lemon and cool water I drained it and I pat it dry I have it on my roasting tray my oven is heating up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit I'm gonna go in with sea salt and any salt will work it's just I like using sea salt in everything that I do fresh ground black pepper and we're gonna roast these for about an hour and in doing so we're gonna pull out a lot more flavor it is unlikely typical um, way of cooking oxtail in the Caribbean but I'm telling you this thing here is pure fire olive oil we need to coat it now I'm gonna go in with my hands and I'm gonna give that a good mix then I'm gonna put lightly cover it with foil into the oven 350 degrees for one hour while I have that oven going I also did the same thing to pumpkin and two large carrots There's about two and a half pounds of pumpkin there any sort of squash will work but by roasting it and all I did is olive oil this time no salt no black pepper because I just want to pull out that natural sweetness by roasting it in the oven you know we already got the oven on why not maximize the use and create maximum flavor at the same time so into the oven same 350 degrees one hour later and look at the niceness we got there nice roasted oxtail with the bones and everything we're gonna remove it off here and we'll put half a cup of hot water into the tray we can scrape it because I want to pick up all that lovely flavor that is fun that is pure flavor down there I've got my soup pot on a medium flame with one tablespoon of olive oil I've got a diced onion that is a medium onion eight cloves of garlic some fresh thyme scallion and black pepper I love using fresh ground black pepper as you if you've been following me you know but you don't have to whatever black pepper you have feel free to use that give that a good mix and I'm going to reduce my heat to low so I want this to slowly sort of soften up and release all that flavor from the garlic, the onion, the scallion, the thyme. Skillican is happening in there right now. Four minutes later, I'm going to turn my heat back up to medium high. And here's where we're going to scrape it. With all of that roasted oxtail bones and everything else in here. Well, oxtail is very bony. <laughs> Yeah, oxymoron, I did not say you're lashing on me there. Just remember, half a cup of hot water is going to go on that. I'm going to give that a quick stir. Scrape all of that lovely flavor into it. Later on, if the soup turns out to be a bit fatty, we'll be able to skim some of that fat out later on so don't stress too much to give this soup some body I've got some washed yellow split peas and that is one cup of yellow split peas that I gave a wash to and water that is hot water of course we'll need salt no you're not seeing things we added quite a bit of water and it is a soup after all we're making and part of the reason of roasting the bones and roasting the pumpkin and the carrot and everything is to create a killer broth so it is about the broth and it's also about everything else that's going in there and of course you always ox still you have to love it you have to do the right thing and add a nice heaping tablespoon of Caribbean green seasoning if you're new to Caribbean green seasoning it is a blend or puree of all the herbs along with garlic and pimento peppers and everything else we love using in our dishes in the spanish-speaking caribbean we have something similar in the french-speaking caribbean we've got something similar we're going to bring this up to a boil now but before we do so we've got the scotch bonnet pepper so we're just gonna boom let that float in there now later on i will break that if you don't want to release the heat if you don't want to release that caribbean sunshine listen fish it out whole do not break it and set it aside for whoever wants to eat that but for now it's just a matter of allowing this to come up to a boil and i will break it as i said because i want the spicy 
But you've been warned. Carrots and pumpkin has been roasting there for the same one hour as the um, the oxtails. What I did was I allowed it to cool, and all I'm going to do is cut them up into smaller pieces, like so. Yeah, the carrot into half, and that's going to go into the pot now. It's been one hour on that sort of rolling boil that you're seeing there. I still haven't busted the pepper yet, but hey, later on I'm going to bust that up. At this point, we're going to go in with the roasted pumpkin and carrot. Scrape that down and that's going to add a lovely sweetness to things. I don't want too much of that oil going into the pot. We will definitely need to add more water in here. If you're wondering if you wanted to add a stock, you can add some beef stock, but I don't want to take away too much from that roasted oxtail that we added in here. The pumpkin is meant to break down to give body to the soup, so don't be worried because you're gonna see starting to fall apart there. That is exactly what we want. As it starts back coming up to a boil, what I'm gonna do is add some two tablespoons of coconut cream in there. Hit that a little mix, and if you don't have coconut cream and you want to use one cup of coconut milk, by all means wrap that coconut milk. It's the same thing, it's just that the coconut cream is a bit more concentrated. We are going to allow this to continue boiling on that rolling boil for another 30 minutes before we add our ground provision. And the ground provision today is very basic, it's what I can afford, it's what I can source. I'm not paying yam price. Yam is five and six dollars a pound. No, I have Edo's sweet potato and your regular potato. It's been half an hour since we added the roasted carrots and pumpkin. At this point, yeah, you see it's been going on that rolling boil. I am going to smash that pepper because I want that heat to start making its way into the soup now. So pepper is smashed. If you wanted to fish it out at this point and discard it or save it for someone who likes spicy that is totally up to you now is where we're gonna add the sort of real body to the soup and that is complements of Edo's sweet potato and just regular old potato yeah you know this what we need to <laughs> it always happens man you'll need a bigger pot uncle Chris you should know by now horse Along with the ground provision, I've got some okra, or okra, some of you call it okra. I grew up in the Caribbean, I'm a Caribbean boy, so we call it okra, yeah? I cut off the stems and chopped it up into small pieces, well, maybe about one inch pieces or so. We're gonna add just a tiny bit more water, we're gonna tuck everything down into there, and we're gonna bring that up to a boil and let that cook until the potato, the edos, the sweet potato is fully cooked. The whole idea here, and it is a long cook process. That is because we want the meat on the oxtail to be falling off the bones. What I forgot to mention earlier is, I did add one tablespoon of tomato concentrate. And that is just the paste, tomato paste. No, you're not seeing things. I switched over to another pot. It's been one hour since we added the sweet potato, Edo's, and, and, and um, regular potato. And you would have noticed, let's see if I can pull it up for you guys here. I cut everything into really large pieces. The Edo's I left whole. I want to be gentle now because it's been cooking for quite a while. And that is to ensure the oxtail is nice and tender. But I cut it purposely big so it doesn't fall apart and we have some texture later on. At this point, yeah, I had to switch over, as I said. I added more water so you can see your real thing going on here. At this point, I'm gonna go in with some baby spinach. And the whole idea here with this soup is not just about flavor and everything else. It's nutrition. And it's a great way to sneak in stuff that your children or your adults may not usually like, but that spinach here, baby spinach has been washed. And we have a couple more things to add in here, but what I'm gonna do is tuck that down in there and let that go now. At this point is where I also like to add my dumplings, and these are what we call spinners. And it's pretty much about a cup and a half of flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I like adding um, about a teaspoon of brown sugar in there, water, create a dough, let it rest for about 10 minutes, well, five, 10 minutes, and then you would pinch off pieces 
and all you would do is put a piece in your hand and roll it like so creating a sort of cigarette or small cigar um, that's going to go in last here and you know I set a couple more things to go in here and the final thing is after about six minutes after the dumplings have all gone in here what you'll need to do is to taste the soup for salt and adjust it accordingly because remember we added quite a bit of um, potato, sweet potato, edos, and you know you can use cassava, um, green banana, yam, dashing, um, just about anything in the soup is totally up to you. If you didn't want to roast the the um, the pumpkin and the carrot, totally up to you. But I would still recommend that you add it in here. Um, yeah I'm just gonna give that about five or six minutes until everything and you know you really want to be gentle because we're not trying to break up the potato and sweet potato and all that stuff like that just look at that luscious oh boy are you eating like a king tonight you know yeah telling your boy but anyhow you're gonna give this about four minutes taste it for salt and then give it another three or four minutes to ensure that the dumplings are fully cooked so <laughs> salt yes Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I mean, trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. And that's it, that's a wrap. You'll start seeing the dumplings starting to float on the top here. And in my humble opinion, second day or the next day, leftover soup. The dumplings is even better because it takes on this sort of pillowy effect. And man, I'm telling you, I do hope you all get an opportunity to give this one a try. An iconic, ultimate, oxtail soup. Just look, boy. Yeah, boy, thing looking proper, yes? Just proper.